Good morning to everyone. Welcome to another episode of Function Fridays brought to you by QTPTutorial.net. This is our third Function Fridays and I'm so excited to have you guys here with me. I am looking at my YouTube views and as of today on Sunday, when I am recording this video, I have 211 views and that is amazing. I wanted to say thank you guys so much for all your support. It, I can't believe that it's only been a few weeks and I'm already over one fifth of the way to 1000 views. That is just crazy. Anyways, so let's just go ahead and get started because Function Fridays moves fast and I want to bring you guys the content, okay? So today, I want to create a function that we are going to call add OR to all actions, and OR is short for Object Repository. Let me quickly show you the usefulness of this function and why you should use it very often. I got my QGP test set up here for you guys. And what we have here is two actions. Okay? We have a login and an open app. And both of them have a local repository like always, like every action gets. But this repository is empty. And this repository is empty. So, what do you think is going to happen if I run this code right now? If I push F5, well, for all of you smart guys that said it's going to break, you're correct because there's these objects that exist in the application to perform the test cases, but they're not in the OR. So where are they coming from? Well, I'll tell you that they're coming from a shared object repository. And the problem is that you need to attach the shared object repository. So what you have to do is go here and associate object repository with this action. And then you have to go here and associate object repository with that action. Now, this is only two scenarios, guys. Imagine you're working on a huge application and you have 500 scenarios. So now you have to go in and attach 500 times that repository. Okay? So this function is going to help you and it's going to attach the object repository to each test that you want automatically. All you have to do is run it. That's the beauty, and that's why I'm here to save you guys countless hours with this function. So let's get right to it and start designing it. I'm going to use QTP to design it so that you guys can see the IntelliSense and the methods, and then I'll continue from there. So let's go ahead and start a sub and give it the name and we're going to give it two parameters okay we're going to pass it the test and the object repository let's go ahead and declare some variables very important okay i'll explain everything as we get towards the end now i need to create an instance of QTP application. Okay, create an instance of QTP application. And now we're going to launch QTP application. And you guys will get to see some methods right here from the IntelliSense. Okay, let's comment as we go along. Now we have to make sure that QTP is visible. Because once you open it, right, it can be opened in a non-visible form. So what you have to do is set that equal to true. Okay. Next, we want to open some test. And where's the test path coming from? Right here. And in this instance, we're going to be opening this test that I have right here, okay guys? Next, let's create an object 
that's going to hold all of our test actions. Okay, so now this is going to hold all of our test actions. And let's now run through all of the actions and count all of the actions. Like that. So we're going to run from one up until all the actions that exist. Okay, now we need to make sure that these object repositories are not already attached to the script. Otherwise, it's going to throw an error. And guys, don't worry if you think I'm moving super fast. If you're just jumping into this, it's because I want to make these videos fast and efficient. And I try to explain everything towards the end, but I want to make sure I have this function written for you guys so that you can use it. Okay. And there, you will understand a lot more as we run things. So let me grab this. Awesome. We are done. Now I designed it here in QTP so that you guys can see then tell us and the methods available. So, you know, if you start playing around here and you want to access different methods, you can check them out like that. But this function cannot be run through QTP. It's going to throw, it's going to actually crash QTP probably at some point here when you're trying to open a test because you already have a test open, right? And if you're executing this function, how can it open another test and then continue to run? It's impossible. So I will teach you guys something new today. If you're not familiar with this topic, we're going to run it through a VBS file. Okay. So I'm going to remove all of this. I'm going to cut it control X and I'm going to put it into one of my favorite VBS editing tools. Here it is. It's called VBS edit guys. It, this tool is so awesome for editing VB scripts. Unfortunately, it comes with a $60 price tag for the license, but that's actually really cheap for what you get because you can use it forever and it is super helpful. It will make your automation capabilities so much better because you can actually design all of your scripts without it or without QTP. Let me paste it in here and you guys can see how nice it looks. It also has debug capabilities and much more. I'll actually create a video about VBS edit where I show you guys all the awesome features and what it does and how to use it. So don't worry right now. I'm here to show you the function, right? So we put the function in here and I actually already pre-created a function call to it. Let me just make sure I got the same name and just so I don't waste your time right here. I passed the test path and then this is the object repository path right here. Okay. So we'll get to see this in action guys. Let me put a breakpoint here and I am going to save this. And remember guys, I'm saving it without object repositories. Locals are empty. So if I run this, you guys know it's going to fail because these objects don't exist. Okay. Closing it. And now let's go ahead and run this function and you guys will get to see it in action. And that's why I love this VPS edit because you get to see what QTP does in real time. So let's go ahead and click start up here. Give it a second. Look, it opened up QTP. I'm not doing anything. And now it's at a break point. Let me set these up for you guys so you can see better. Pull this down. VBS edit here. Okay. So now look, we're at this step. Now it's going to get an object that references all of the actions. 
Let's go ahead. If we push F11. Step into like that. Okay. Now look, we can check out all the actions right here. Count two, item and so on. Okay. So there's two actions. This is what it references to. So now if we run from one to two, we're going to check that these ORs are not already attached. So let's continue. Step in again. Okay. Now this condition should be true because we can see nothing is attached, right? And what are we looking for the attachment? This STROR path, which is this. You guys can see it here. Okay. Yahoo.tsr. And let's continue. Step in. It's not there. So now it's going to add. Boom. Did you guys see that? It added it. How awesome is that, huh? Okay. Let's continue again. Watch for the next action. Boom. Added right there. You can imagine if you had like 10 actions here, it would be so easy to add. Okay. And then continue. And now it's done. Function is finished. It added object repositories dynamically to our script. So imagine this is like a little template. Anytime you're starting to set up a test and you know it's for some application like Yahoo, all you have to do is run this script and attach the appropriate object repository to all the actions. And now all of them have a reference to that object repository. Piece of cake, right? And let's go ahead and now that we have these object repositories, we can run our script and see what happens. Oh, by the way, guys, I used this function, open application, that we designed in a previous tutorial, QTP and identifying objects like an expert, because I try to utilize everything that we learn, because this is a very useful function. And where it is, is in this object repository, where I'm going to be storing everything that we learn. Okay. And if you want this code, just go ahead and sign up at qtptutorial.net for the emails. And I will be sending you guys function Friday's code to your inbox every Friday. No catch. Anyways, let's run it to see what happens. Our function open application. What it does is it opens up some browser and it went to yahoo.com. Now it's going to close it, open up a new one. And it's missing an object in the repository. Let's go ahead and check the problem. Yes, sorry guys, forgot to add that object to the repository. Anyways, that's not part of the function Fridays. So trust me, all I have to do is add this object. It will go in, execute this. Our script works fine. Okay. And let me quickly describe to you what this function did. So it takes two parameters, which are the test path and the object repository path. So it went in and we created an instance of quick test application. And that can be used outside of quick test because once quick test is open, you can't create any more instances of it because you can only have one quick test application running at a time. Okay. Just remember that guys. So this has to be run through a VBS file, which is this right here that I created. And once I save it, let me put it on desktop, for example. Okay. Did you guys see when I was saving it? On the desktop, it looks like this. Okay, guys, this is how it looks. All I have to do is double click it and it runs. It's amazing. Anyway, so then we launched our application and we made sure that it's visible. Then we opened up our QTP test. And here we created an instance of an object 
that contains all of the actions, okay? We can run through all of the actions from one up until however many actions there are in this object. There may be 10, there may be 100, who knows, okay? And then if this object repository is not found, negative one means not found. So if this condition is true and this object repository is not found, then we're going to go ahead and add the object repository path. This has to happen because if the OR is already added, QTP is going to throw an error. Okay, I think that's it. I covered another function for you guys, function number three. Thank you guys so much for joining me here today. Thank you guys so much for your support. I love all of the views on YouTube. It means that I'm doing my job and you guys are enjoying it. Thank you all again. Continue watching Function Fridays and be sure to subscribe to the channel and get on with the movement so that I can make you guys experts in QTP. All right, take care. See you next Friday.